Hello everyone and welcome back to Jackie Educational Channel. So this is the part 46 of the most expected questions for the UGC NET Environmental Science paper and we are dealing with the unit 9 that is the statistics part. So we are dealing with the basics of statistics, which questions came in the examination and which are having the possibilities of being asked in the next examination. So if you haven't checked the previous parts, you can check the link given in the description as well in the i button. So let's start the today's video. So the first MCQ question is on your screen. The question is dash is a 10 into 10 cell grid in which each cell represents one percentage point summing up to total hundred percentage. So here are the options. I'll wait for certain seconds. Then I will reveal the answer. So here the correct option will be this question is asking about the waffle chart. So for most of you, this waffle chart, this term will be new for you. So let's move to the next slide to know more about the waffle chart. So as you can see, there is the waffle in front of your screen. So waffle bytes, most of you will be aware of that. So why this name is given as waffle chart? Because this chart looks like a waffle. So as you can see here, this chart looks like waffle. As you can see here, these are square shaped and these square shaped are called as grid. So mostly they are of 10 into 10 cell grid. So in the length, there will be 10 squares or grids and the breadth also there will be 10 squares or grids. So total 100 grids will be there so that one grid represent one percentage. So total how much it will be? It will be 100 percentage. So for example, we can see here we are talking about the number of units sold of any product in 2017. So the products can be A, B, C, D, E. Five different products are sold in 2017 and we should know that by simply looking into this waffle chart we can say after analyzing or even by looking we can say that 1% was the sale for the product A and similarly which was having the maximum sale. The maximum sale was having the blue color grid that shows the product D. So this is known as the waffle chart with the shape of waffle where each cell represent one percentage of the total points and all together they are hundred percentage. So I hope it is interesting for you. Let's move to the next question. The next question is coming up. The next question is which one of the following is a non probability sampling. So this is one of the frequent asked question concepts are coming every time. So let's move to the answer part. So here the answer will be non probability sampling. The correct example will be convenience probability is an example of non probability sampling and all this stratified cluster and systematic. These all three are the example of probability sampling technique. So this is one of the frequent asked question. That's why I thought to include this table so that if any question comes from here, you can answer it easily. So let us know one by one the key differences between probability sampling as well as the non probability sampling. So here in the left hand side first column, it is the key that is the meanings alternatively known as basis of selection all these characteristics. And first we have to know about probability sampling then about non probability sampling. Starting with the meaning, probability sampling is a sampling technique in which the subjects of the population get an equal opportunity to be selected. Yes, all the subjects which you are going to analyze in the sample have the equal chances to be selected as a representative sample. But in case of non-probability sampling, it is not known that which individual from the population will be selected as a sample. So this is the key difference between the meaning and the next thing it is also known as random sampling that is probability sampling. Non-random sampling is the non-probability sampling. So non-non you should remember like that. Basis of selection is randomly selected in case of probability sampling and arbitrarily selected in case of non-probability sampling. Next thing is the opportunity of selection. So the opportunity of selection is fixed and known in case of probability sampling and here the opportunity of selection in non-probability sampling is not specified and unknown. So the research is conclusive in case of probability sampling and research is exploratory type in case of non probability sampling. So this table is very important. I'm repeating note down all these points and the results are unbiased in case of probability sampling and in case of non probability sampling that is the arbitrary sampling. It is case of biased kind of result we will get and the methods are objective mostly objective types in probability sampling and the methods are mostly non probability sampling subjective type. And inferences is statistical and inferences is analytical in case of non probability sampling and hypothesis is tested in case of probability sampling but hypothesis is generated in case of non probability kind of sampling. So these are very important note down. Let's move to the next question. 
the next question is an assertion and reasoning kind of the assertion statement states the hypothesis testing can proceed on the basis of null hypothesis next thing is the reason statement states if the null hypothesis is true then probabilities to different possible sample result can be assigned to it so here the correct option will be option number a yes both assertion and reasoning statements are correct because the hypothesis testing can be proceeded on the basis of null hypothesis so if the null hypothesis is wrong or correct accordingly we can judge alternative hypothesis similarly if the null hypothesis is true the probabilities to different possible sample result can be assigned to that test so these both are correct and reason is the correct explanation of the assertion so let's move to the next question the next question is coming up from the poison distribution it is one of the frequent last question also so the question is in a poison distribution if n is the number of trials and p is the probability of success then what is the mean value given by so this is one of the frequent last i hope everyone will be able to answer this and here the mean which is given as m is equal to np in this option will be d correct because np means the number of trials multiplied by the probability of success will give us the mean of that poison distribution so this is one of the frequent last question as i have repeated so here we should know what are the terminology in the poison distribution so in poison distribution small n denotes the number of finite trials and then x is equal to number of success p is equal to probability of success and here lambda is equal to finite that is n into p finite and positive value it gives and mu that is mean is equal to np that is the finite and positive value and variance is also is equal to np so this is the important thing you should note down mean and variance both are same and standard deviation is equal to root over of lambda that is root over of the mean or you can say root over of the variance that is equal to root over of np value where n is number of finite trials p is equal to probability of success so these things will be given and you have to find the answer very chocolate question you should remember these definitions let's move to the next question the next question is find the range and the coefficient of range of the following data so these data are given kindly find out then i will reveal the answer and i will tell how to find these answers So I hope you would have found the range at least. So let's move to the next slide to know the answer. Here the solution is given for this question of this following data. First you should know what is the largest value in this data. So largest value is how much it is 67. Then smallest value you should know that is denoted as capital S here. So smallest value is 18. So if these two things you know then you can find the range and coefficient range of the given data or any data given. So here what you have to do to find the range you have to subtract large data that the largest value minus smallest value that is 67 minus 18 is equal to 49 will be the range of this following data so this is chocolate question you should not leave and skip this kind of question you should know the formula largest value minus smallest value will give the range similarly coefficient of range the formula is largest minus smallest value divided by largest plus smallest value so largest is 67 smallest is 18 you should subtract on the numerator and we should add in the denominator then after solving we'll get 49 by 85 where the answer will be 0 0.576 that is the coefficient of range of this following data so this is the simple steps which you can do and find the answers and you can score good marks so the next question is if the geometric mean of a sample is given as 5 and the harmonic mean is given as 10 find the arithmetic mean so in this statistic series we have discussed how to find out arithmetic mean geometric mean and harmonic mean but here it is not asking about to find it is asking about to find the arithmetic mean if the geometric and harmonic mean are given so this is also very simple let's move to the next slide to know how to find the answer so here comes the solution part so how to find the answer so it is very simple you should know the formula to find the harmonic mean harmonic mean formula with the relation of geometric and arithmetic mean is given in this formula that is geometric mean whole square divided by arithmetic mean if a and b are positive numbers then this will work so here we will find that here how much is the given we have to find the arithmetic mean in this question so here we will write the formula harmonic mean is given as 10 so we will write in the left hand side 10 is equal to gm that is geometric mean which is given as 5 so 5 whole square divided by arithmetic mean we have to find so we will write it here as x so after solving it what we will get x is equal to 5 square 
that is 25 divided by 10 so i hope you have understood x comes here and then 5 square by 10 so x is equal to 25 by 10 that means x is equal to 2.5 so what was x x was our arithmetic mean so let us see whether it was there in example that options yes option number c will be correct 2.5 will be the arithmetic mean if the geometric mean is 5 and harmonic mean is 10 so i hope you have learned something new from this video if you enjoyed this don't forget to like this subscribe and hit the notification icon to get notification as soon as i upload any video so see you guys in our next video you can join our telegram group for regular quizzes and enhance your knowledge see you guys in our next video